Welcome to Ron Will's Money Matters. Economies are based on people. Now, this is a very key thing because I'm going to tell you what. One of the travesties out here is that people have made economies seem so, so, why, why can I put it? Complicated. Seriously. They've made it so complicated. You get economists, they talk about all this other stuff. And this is a straight-up criticism. They talk about everything except what they should talk about, right? Right, they'd be like numbers, they'd be looking at numbers and making it seem like magic and stuff. And if you got your, now I've read some stuff about different economists and stuff, right? It can be very confusing because they they not on the same page. They get con- you got books, they straight up contradict each other. But I noticed most of them, not all of them, but most of them, they don't look at the one thing that need to be looked at the people. The people. An economy is a social thing. And I'm going to tell you who actually talked about it. It wasn't an econo- uh, economist. It was a psychologist. Amos Wilson. He's a uh, well-known black psychologist. He's an ancestor now. And he wrote about this in his book, uh, Blueprint for Black Power. He was saying an economy is a social thing, which I agree with. You know what? What makes the economy? A people. Because an economy is about what? How people are interacting, what they're going to buy. You know, we talk about the money and people talk about growth and all of that. It's all about what people are going to spend money on. And it, in fact, it's interesting how I really started learning about economies. It wasn't reading a bunch of books, <laughs> seriously. In fact, I read them afterwards to see if they said the same thing. It was when years ago I had this uh, book stand, right? I had this book stand. That's where I really learned about an economy because I had to figure out what people were going to buy in that area, right? Like, let me give you an example. Here's the best way to understand it. Say there's a, uh, say somebody puts together a housing development somewhere. You know, there's always a development, a bunch of townhomes, maybe some apartments, maybe some mixed-use space, you know, got some apartments but got stores underneath and everything, you know, you got some communities like that. There's a ton of communities coming up, all right? And, but, and people start the store, but who's in that area? Who is in that area? And a lot of businesses understand that when they put a business in the area, they do a serious demographic study about everything about the people along their race, income, everything, even their food habits. Now, say you had somebody put together a community. Say the community has maybe 1,000 people, right? And somebody put up a store there, but they studied. What they did was they kind of looked into uh, maybe some demographic study if they were smart. And they found out these people, you know, they made a little bit of money more upper class, more into certain things, right? So they say, okay, they're more upper class. Upper class people love the gym. Okay, boom. Uh, they love to eat healthy. Let's put a, you know, one of those health food type of stores here. In fact, I got an example about that in my own area, right? Um, you know, or they, you know, there's a lot of people who want not just eat healthy, but a lot of vegans. Okay, I can put a vegan restaurant here, right? The economy comes down to what people are going to spend their money on. And what's important to them. And like I said, I was going to use an example from my own area. There's a Sprouts. Anybody who follows me on my men's channel, uh, when I'm doing car videos, I'm always driving from the gym to the local Sprouts. When they put that Sprout in the area, I knew immediately one thing. Somebody had did a study and figured there was a, a, there was a market for that in the area. Now, one thing in the area I'm in, there's a lot of homes being built and a lot of... Uh, Uh, ritzy apartments and luxury apartments being built. So people like that tend to want better food and everything, you know? So it's like, okay, boom. Like another example is like uh, poor neighborhoods, right? Poor neighborhoods. If you go through any poor neighborhood, what do you see? What's the economy? Bunch of takeout places, cheap takeout places, which probably need to be shut down every other day. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you got a ton of fast food places. You got a ton of cheap stores, you know, uh, with cheap products. Like you might have a lot of, uh, 
you know, dollar or five dollar type stores there or something like that. You know, but that's based on the people that live in that region, you know. And when you look at the overall economy, like the economy was dipping down. Oh, no, let me give a great better example. The retail apocalypse. The retail apocalypse. Like there's always news about like these department stores, other type of stores closing. And restaurants that serve people in these areas closing. Right. Now, what is that about? If you look at the people, what's going on with the people? The real issue is this. When they talk about the retail apocalypse, the retail apocalypse, though, that means all these middle class stores are closing. That's primary what's closing. The middle class stores. Stores that serve discount stuff, they're not really complaining. They're not complaining as much, all right? And here's something else. Luxury stores that serve upper-class folks, they actually building more. <laughs> they are building more. So, all right, so what's happening there is the retail apocalypse is don't means that the people who would normally spend money there in these places, they don't have the money anymore, or they either... They either be losing money, so they need more discount type of places, which haven't been complaining, right? Which haven't been complaining as much. You're actually getting more traffic. Or you got the uh, luxury places more for the upper class because the people from the middle class, they either went down or they went up. So that's the real thing. What's happening in this country overall to the economy is the middle class is disappearing. Right. But those are the people. Those are the people. And like I said, I started really learning this when I was selling books because I had to pay attention to what people were buying what books. So I would know in what area I was in, who was here, who's going to buy what I was selling. That's a very key thing. That is a very, very key thing. You got to you got to understand that. Right. Got to understand that. Like any economy, if it's something ain't happening or something ain't buying, look at them. And then what are the people in that area, what they into? What kind of clothing are they going to wear? That's why in some places, if I drive through any place or you tell me what stores in a place, I can tell you all about it. Because I've been in some rich areas. They got all the richy stores, richy uh, places. And then you get in some poor areas and you get like... Like I said, you get those uh, questionable hygiene uh, takeout joints and cheaper stores. You know, you can always just look. You can take one look at the stores and know something about the people there. It's always on the people. So, you know, even in when you're in business, you're in business for yourself, right? Know your audience. Know your demographics. Who going to buy what you're selling and where they going to buy it? Now, it's not as bad as it used to be because of online. Online, one thing about being having an online business, it expands it. But if you have a brick-and-mortar business or you think about it, you need to think about, okay, what's there? Like when I moved to the area I'm in now in the local mall, I'd actually start walking through that local mall and start paying attention to people because I was thinking about uh, setting up a kiosk for some book sales. But uh, the type of books I wanted to sell and the people – who were frequented that mall, I'd have been broke in a month. <laughs> I'd have been out of business in a month. And it is what it is. And even now, though, I still pay attention to folks because I said, okay, I'm noticing like in the area I'm in, you got a ton of exercise places, but it's, it's like increasingly middle class, upper class. So if I have a business that can appeal to upper class folks or a store or something like that, I can, Ron can make that money. So anyway, right, I want you all to think about that. You look at any economy, I don't care what the theory is, look at the people. If you look at the overall U.S. economy, always look at the people, what they eating, what type of stuff they like, anything. You look at any business, you can examine. It's like, okay, what's their, what's their crowd? If a business is going out of business, okay, what's their demographic? What type of people use that particular product on the regular or service on the regular? If they're going out of business and then you're just like, boom, 
Always look at the people when you're talking about economies. So anyway, you know what? Since this is more business, y'all know what to do at the end. Let's go make that money. Oh.